Greetings and welcome back to the bench. Today I want to take a look at the Stereo to Mono Mix Down Box or the John Audio Tech Magic Mix Down Box as I'll call it. I had some requests to do a video on this thing so why not? Well I made this thing probably 25 years ago. So what does this thing do? Well it basically takes the stereo signal and mixes it together into just a mono channel and you see there's three switches on here so it does a little more than just that it allows you to listen to either the left or the right channel or switch them both out for mute it has of course the sum switch but probably the most interesting mode on here is the differential switch where it takes the two signals and instead of summing it actually subtracts them so if you have two signals and they're in phase and at the same amplitude, in other words, it's center panned or mono, where when you subtract one channel from the other, you get zero in that case. Now with a lot of music, the vocals, the drums, and the bass are generally going to be center panned. Not always, especially with older music, but Mainly, the vocals and the drums and bass will be center panned. So why would you want to use that? Why would you want to take the vocals or whatever out of the music? Well, for me, it's mainly just a curiosity. But if you're a musician and you're trying to hear a certain instrument, and because the vocals and other instruments are covering it, you may be able to hear that instrument if you use it in differential mode. It really depends on how the stereo mix went down. Another example, if you're a singer and you want to remove the vocals, because probably 90 plus percent of the time, at least with modern music, the vocals are center panned, you can take the vocal out and sing along with the song that way. But like I say, it depends on how the stereo mix went down. You know, some songs sound a lot different. Other songs don't sound much different at all. Okay, so what I'll do now is give you a music sample. And this is where it kind of hurts that I can't play copyrighted music on YouTube for just a few seconds. It really would be nice to demonstrate some music that I know really has a neat effect with this. But instead, I have to resort to the YouTube library and, you know... I don't know what I can dig up there. Okay, so I have the music player plugged into the input of this. And the output, I'm just connecting to this little amplifier, chip amp that's on the uh, breadboard here. Connected to speakers. And I'll flip it, some switches around here and give you an example of what it sounds like. After I do that, we'll uh, take a look at the schematic and uh, take a look inside this box. It's in sum mode now, so it's just mixing down to mono. Right channel only. Left channel only. Not a lot of difference. Diff mode. Some. Diff. Some. Try something else here. That's in some difference. Some. So, yeah, you can kind of hear when I went to difference mode, the accordion kind of sounded ambient. See if I can find something with a vocal in it. Okay, I found something here. We'll start in some mode and then we'll go to difference mode. To become what I am. Slow down the
it takes the vocal out. It wasn't complete. Depends on the stereo effects they add, like the, uh, you know, if they take a center panned vocal and add a stereo reverb to it, you, you get that effect where the vocal sounds like it's in a big concrete chamber and you're miking it from the other end. But in cases where the center panned is exactly perfectly centered and there's no stereo reverb or anything, it'll completely remove the vocal. That last music wasn't in the library, but I'm pretty sure it's not being controlled under somebody's copyright. But anyhow, uh, one more thing I'll show you is what poor MP3 compression can sound like. It really shows up in the Difference channel. Now I can't play this, I can't play much of the song summed together because of the copyright jerks, but uh, you'll hear when I switch it to diff mode how terrible it sounds. And the name That's so bad you can't even recognize that it's a song. It just sounds like some digital hash or something. Well, that was a mono music that was compressed in stereo using MP3 at some low bit rate. And it just sounds horrendous. It doesn't actually doesn't sound bad just listening to the song in mono, but uh, when you differentiate it, it sounds terrible. So if you do use something like this, and you have a poorly compressed sound, you'll hear a lot of that wa underwatery um, MP3 compression like uh, sound added to the music. Like I said, I wish I would be able to play some other music that would show the effects better, but oh well. So, what I did is I made a test file, an indicated channel test file, and it has a left panned, right panned front which is the center panned and rear now the rear is just the left and right channels out of phase and that's how they encoded the rear signal information in Dolby surround so what I'll do first is with this set for some mode I'll play that you'll hear both the channels the front and the rear will be removed left right front So as you see there, you could not hear the rear channel indication. Another thing you might have noticed is that the front channel was quite a bit louder. That's because you're mixing the left and right channel together. And that's what they call in the music industry a center channel buildup. And that was a problem back in the 60s when some people had mono turntables and others had stereo. They would release a stereo version and a mono version. So in the mono version of the record, they would have to bring the center pan signals down somewhat so they wouldn't be as loud. And to make stereo records more compatible with mono equipment, they created some techniques using phase shifting to eliminate that center channel buildup. I'm not sure of the exact pronunciation, but it's Heiko CSG. And one of the record companies used that on some of the albums back in the late 60s. Well, of course, when you do something like that, it does damage the stereo image. So a lot of uh, audio purists didn't like that. But anyhow, now let's go into difference mode. And I'll play that same file. You'll notice that the uh, front channel will now be removed. And you'll hear the rear channel left, right, back. And you notice that the rear channel was very loud in diff mode because you're differentiating to inverted signals. It's actually adding them together because the way the math works. So what I'll do at the end of the video just before the Snickers clip, I'll put in that channel test audio. Okay, here's the internal schematic really nothing to it it's just uh, switch logic really so over here this is how the connector is wired up and let me get this out of the way 
So uh, what we have here is the left and right channel switches and the sum and different switch. That's the main part and there's a few resistors as well. So let's take a look at the circuit set into sum mode. So what you have here is a double pull double throw switch. These are the connection pins on the outside of the switch and these are the internal contacts that slide back and forth. So it's shown in difference mode here but in sum mode these contacts would be up in this position so these two pins would be shorted together and these two pins on the other side would be shorted together. These would be left open. So our left signal comes in here goes through the switch which of course would be closed and it passes through a resistor. Also the right channel comes in through the switch of course is closed and passes through the resistor. Because these are shorted together it's mixing the two channels together and that's why you have the resistors here because the low impedance of the output circuit of you know, say like a music player you just can't short these together because you'd actually be shorting the channels out if you did that. So for example if the left channel was playing information and the right channel was not or it was playing a signal that was different this would actually be shorting to the other channel. With my music players if you did that they would make an awful sound but uh, anyway that's what those are for. You don't want to short them together without the resistors that would limit the current. Okay so anyway in some mode left and right are combined together and they come out to the center pin of the RCA jack. And the ground comes over here and in some mode these are up here of course shorted together so that comes out to the shield side and because this side is open in some mode you know nothing's connected nothing happens with that wire okay in difference mode would have the contacts moved in this position so these two on this side and these two are shorted together and these two would be left open so your left signal comes in through here and since this is now open it just continues up to the center pin now the right channel will come through here go through this connection and come up here to the shield side so if your one side was putting out one volt and the other channel had the same signal same phase and amplitude let's say one volt it'd be 1 minus 1 and 0. So that's how you're differentiating those two channels in diff mode. And ground is not used in diff mode. Ground would come over here, comes up to this point, and these two contacts are shorted and this goes nowhere, so ground is just open. The last thing you see here is this resistor across the output. That's because in some modes, like when you have these switched open, it's just leaving this as a high impedance connection and you can pick up hum. Well this adds some resistance to the output to help reduce that. Another thing I would like to say with the circuit, it's best used with a portable music player that runs on its own batteries. Due to ground loops it's possible to get hum when you're running in differential mode if you're using some electrical connected source device. Now you can use an active circuit using op amps and really make something fancy that has filters and you know might let the bass through but t still take the vocals out but that's beyond the scope of this video okay here's inside my box there's extra parts for some reason I had 1k resistors from each channel to ground and the switches and these resistors are swapped in position. It's a series circuit, so it doesn't matter. And these are 100 ohms I used. Uh, if you're using a low impedance output, like a music player, you know, the headphone out jack, you could use 100 ohms here on these resistors and 470 on this one. That should help eliminate any extra hum by keeping the circuit as low impedance as possible. So it, it's similar, it's not identical. 
but I'd recommend this circuit. Left. Right. Front. Left. Right. Front. Hey, Snickers. You getting hungry? You seem to perk up a little bit. Yeah, I said the magic words, didn't I? Are you getting hungry? Huh? <laughs> Come here. Come here, you. Oh, he got hungry on me.